Hey guys, Too Legit City here. Today we're going to be going over a design for the Iron Volcano. And that means today's video is going to be the Iron Volcano Tamer. Now, this design's a little bit different from one of our other designs. And I wanted to tackle in and try out different designs for the Metal Volcanoes. As these are the most fun to play around with. Assuming you know how to play around with these, the high temperatures adds a challenge that's a little bit different from a lot of the other geysers. But today we're gonna to show you how to tame a iron volcano using water. <laughs> and one of the things that seems counterintuitive with this is that the molten iron dripping down at 2,526 degrees Celsius, the moment it drips, you would imagine that because it touches water, it would flash into steam. The crazy thing is that it doesn't. And today we're gonna to showcase this design on how this works. Now, if you guys have already seen the liquid sulfur tamer design, it basically takes the same concept, but we had to manipulate and change some of the things inside to make it so that it's able to deal with the hot temperature that is 2,526 degrees Celsius. And basically what we're running is nine tiles wide, four tiles tall, 36 tiles of water. And we're keeping this in a vacuum. By doing this and keeping it in a vacuum, the molten iron that spills out upon eruption stays on top of the neutronium, but at some point after enough iron spills on it, it's gonna spill off onto the side. And when it spills off to the side, it solidifies and we run a conveyor loop in here with the auto sweeper. As you can see, we have a loader right here. It just goes through the loop. The pattern doesn't matter. My pattern had to go like this because of how I wanted to set up my conveyor center over here. But you could change how this looks like. Um, it doesn't really matter. All you guys need to have is a thermal sensor where if it's cool enough, you let it out. And if not, you re-loop it back in. So one of the things you do need for this is that you needed to have the conveyor rail come out of the green signal. If you have it come out of the green signal, you don't need the bridge here actually, as it would work fine. And basically this bridge is not needed. You could just have a rail right here. Our center right here is set to above 45. So that means if it's hotter than 45 degrees, it's going to be looping back to the rail to cool down again in the liquid. Now, our volcano is about to erupt. We'll show you how that looks like in a second. Behind this, we also have an aqua tuner loop from two aqua tuners made out of steel and a steam turbine setup. You can see it's a very standard setup. And by running this with a temperature sensor of 24 degrees, we run two separate pipelines on here. Covers equal amount of uh, liquid space. And by doing this, we actually cool the water faster than the iron could heat it up. In one eruption period, meaning that after a full eruption, and rising pressure for the next one we cool down the water more than it heats up so this is a net gain for us in thermal energy and we're out cooling the iron and we'll show you right now how this process looks like and bam it's gonna erupt so looking at the thermal energy we get the hot iron and the water temperature barely goes up it's very slow we're doing the same technique where we basically take the hot liquid medium and have it run against a lot more mass of another medium to super cool it down. By doing this, we actually get the iron coming out pretty quick. As the moment it's above 45 degrees, we let it out. As you can see, we already have one 10 kilogram piece of iron already getting out of the system. And you can see that it's cooling down rather quickly. Now, we're going to use the Volcano. It has typically a 1.2 cycle before it's going to uh, erupt again. So you could see that before even 0.1 cycle, the iron's coming out pretty quickly. The amount of speed this cools down the iron, I want to say it's unparalleled. Because, man, you get the iron fast. Now, of course, looking at the liquids right now, you could see that we have 1,000 kilograms per tile on the bottom tiles. The top tile, I recommend to have around 250 kilograms. The reason behind it is because when the iron spills in, 
it's considered a liquid for a split second, and that actually pushes around a lot of the water around. If you actually had this fill up to a thousand kilograms on the top layer, it's going to push up vertically when the iron spills down, and then it's going to touch the molten iron up top, and it's going to flash steam. So when that happens, it's going to break the build. The build only works if you maintain the vacuum. So because of that, you have to have the top layer be less than 300 kilograms per tile, but you're going to shoot for around 250. Now, of course, the auto sweeper loader setup is very straightforward. We talked about that. There is a simple automation setup right here for the conveyor shutoff. Otherwise, the only other things we have down here are diamond temp shift plates. Basically, we have two here, two here, two here, and two here. If you guys don't have diamond, I would recommend one of the refined metals. And if you guys do choose to use something else, understand that if it melts because of the hot iron, you don't want to use it. So something like lead is out of the question. Now, for the materials, a lot of my pipelines, my rail right here is all made out of iron ore. For all of the rail parts, the sweeper is made out of copper. The loader is actually also made out of copper. Because it's in a liquid tank like this, you don't need steel for a lot of the materials in here. So because of that, you don't need steel except for the aqua tuners because they are going to get really hot. But guys, this has been another design for the Iron Volcano Tamer. If you guys have any questions about this, leave a comment down below. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And of course, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you, guys.